Performance, I think, is really a field that helps understand how people interact with systems. For me, that's anything you're doing to, to make the human being better. Help make their lives easier, help make it less stressful, help make them think faster, make safer decisions. How do we create tools? How do we create education? How do we train them? How do we do things to make their jobs? easier. It's known as a couple of different things. There's human performance, there's cognitive engineering, there's applied experimental psychology, there's human factors. I would say human performance is really about helping people interact with the things that they interact with every day. Human performance is integrating lots of different people and is more of an interdisciplinary approach. This field really focuses on the understanding that humans have certain capabilities and limitations that we actually cannot change. A lot of engineers focus on making the users fit to the technology, now we're trying to make the technology fit to the users. I know what's impacting the way they think, what's impacting um, the way their body's operating, what's impacting the way that they're interacting with the technology. There's a lot of different um, engineering disciplines, psychology, social psychology, marketing, you know, it all kind of rolls into human performance. You could design a technology, you could test a technology, and then you could develop that technology. So that's kind of the uh, research, development, test, and evaluation spectrum. And so then they'll take that from the science to the industry and make it more commercialized or you know, make it more uh, available to the people. So in terms of the STEM disciplines, science, technology, engineering, math, all of those disciplines are important to human performance. I do use algebra a lot, um, especially when you're doing measurements of uh, biometrics or people's body shapes. In order to understand humans, we have to understand science about humans, whether it's psychology or biology or something else. Math and science and engineering, in my view, drive the world. It's what we're walking on, what we're wearing, what we're seeing. Statistics is, is really the big one. So once we've collected data in a specific scenario, how do we take that data and turn it into something meaningful? If we're going to create technologies, we have to understand engineering in order to create the technologies. Definitely, like in my studies, I, I learned about anatomy and physiology and how the brain works, and I've definitely I've started been using that in my work. There are other ways to, to be in this field without having to focus on the side of math. Understand that you can get in it from an artistic perspective, you can get in it from a construction perspective, you can get in it from a, um, a physiology perspective. You're writing all the time because you want to get out into the world the results of the experiments that you've done, what your research has produced. No matter how smart you are, no matter how much you know, if you can't get it out of your mouth, and, and pass it on to someone else, it's not going to go anywhere. You know, it is really important to learn these things. So the things that I do, I'm, I'm looking at ways to enhance cognitive performance. So maybe when you're trying to focus on something for a long period of time, finding ways to allow you to focus longer or, or, or stay awake. What we're doing is we're creating a virtual patient that you could interact with and speak to just like you would a real human and it would talk back with you. So our particular virtual patient is really focused around helping to train communication skills. One of the things that we're looking at here is, is eye tracking and it allows us to do eye tracking in a wide field of view so we can have two screens whereas most systems, most of them anyway, do one screen. 
And so what we're looking at is what are people paying attention to, where do they look to get the information that is required to do the, the task at hand. Other specific programs that we're working on developing is uh, a real-time emotion detection tool. So what we are doing is mapping different muscle movements with different cognitive states. I can collect data with the 3D sensor, shoot it through my software code, and my software code can tell me how an individual is reacting. I'm using it in lots of different applications. If you're working with individuals with an autism spectrum disorder, can't communicate fully uh, how they want to communicate. So if I can have an automated tool to help teachers or parents understand what that child is trying to communicate, whether they're happy or frustrated, then maybe it could help you um, interact with the child, you know, better. We improve systems so that humans are more effective and therefore we reduce mistakes we help with safety issues. We're trying to figure out what are they doing, why are they doing it, and can we recognize when they start getting in trouble so that we can employ some remediation uh, technique to get them out of trouble. I actually get to run around and go places and talk to people and see really awesome things. Being a part of actually discovering something real and then also the opportunity to do something that actually impacts people's lives. You can facilitate people making more effective and more efficient decisions uh, by just a couple of changes. I've been able to touch on a wide variety of different things and that makes it more exciting because I never get bored. I like the quest. If a problem is exciting to me, I can say, hey, this looks really cool. Um, we should try to figure out you know, how to help these people. There's an opportunity to do something for the human being to do kind of those cool science fiction things that you see in the movie and make them a reality. I'm never really doing the same thing twice and really my job is about identifying problems, learning about those problems, and then figuring out how to fix them.